Hi, and welcome back to my past life as a flight attendant. This is part two of the mystery valet who got me to Hawaii for my very first time. So, to catch you up really quickly, this mystery valet who is super, super sweet, went above and beyond, got me to Hawaii, but then kind of got this thought in my mind of who is this guy and why was he so amazing and maybe he could like me because he was like tell me how hawaii went so a part of me was curious about that and it was romanticized in my mind the more i was thinking about it helped by the other flight attendants who i was working with dinah in particular and she took it upon herself to scroll through facebook at this point because we now know the two names of the two valets who were working and she's scrolling through Facebook trying to find somebody who looks familiar. And finally, we found a familiar face. Okay, I'm going to read where we left off. I wrote this years ago, by the way. But it was the other valet who had been working, Brookman. So by process of elimination, that meant Benson was my mystery man. And real quick, as you know, I changed all the names in this story and I wasn't very original with Benson's name because the hotel I stayed at was the Benson. So yeah, if you were wondering, yeah, that was not very original. <laughs> but Benson, Benson was my mystery man. Benson, I rolled the name over in my mind like a sweet ball of cookie dough. A strong name, not terribly common. I think I liked it. After some more internet digging, Dinah and I couldn't find any indication that he had an online presence. That's okay, I told her. Because now I'm certain of his name, I could write him a shining review. You are going to put your name in it, aren't you? She said. Of course. First and last, she continued matter-of-factly, and you should include your email address. Otherwise, it's just going to be another review. I pondered her bold suggestion. My scrunched face <sighs> thought about it in a pained smile. She was probably right. Wait, even with contact information, I don't know if he'll ever see it, and if he does, I doubt he'll consider it an invitation to get to know me. We both puzzled over this dilemma over the next couple days as our trip landed us in San Jose, California after Lahui, and then back to Seattle. I ended up sending a positive feedback message to the Coast Hotel, which is a company that owns the Portland Hotel. There just didn't seem to be a way to know if he would ever even know, so there was that. On, our la on the last day of our trip, Dinah suddenly got excited and said, I've got it, your ticket. <laughs> I know what you should do. We were sitting next to each other on the jump seat as our aircraft taxied to the gate. Remember when he declined your tip? He told you that instead to tell him how Hawaii was. So you should write him a letter and send it to the hotel. And then you can even include your phone number at the end. That's a great idea, I said. Just perfect. I felt a burst of adrenaline and excitement shoot through my system. It was shortly followed by sudden worry. What if he doesn't respond or worse, has a girlfriend? And then I may get another Portland layover and see him again at the hotel. That would be so awkward. My worry was making me ramble. I doubt he'd have made that comment if he has a girlfriend, she said. And even if he doesn't respond, you may never get another overnight layover there because eventually won't you get your transfer to Portland and you'll never stay at that hotel again. She made a valid point. My family was in Salem an hour from Portland and so I had put in for a transfer months ago. So really, if nothing came in my letter, I may honestly never have seen him again anyway. So the next portion of this, uh, Mystery Valet, is after the trip is over, it was a day after the trip to be precise. All right, here we go. A day after my trip, I crafted, recrafted, then edited and reworded a letter to my mystery valet who by process of elimination, we determined, went by the name of Benson. After hearing several suggestions from friends about how I should proceed, I'd made my decision. I'd take the final letter I'd typed in snail mail style it to the hotel directly, sub address to the valet, Benson, with the hopes that it would fall into the right hands. Writing the letter itself wasn't difficult. As a lover of words and a lover of love, it was equally exciting and enchanting to write to the elusive valet. The difficult part was gaining the brazen confidence it would take to send such a letter. But I knew I wasn't getting any younger. Life was short, 
and I couldn't live with myself without knowing how this would play out. So sitting in my car in front of a quaint local car shop called Paper Delights, I read my letter one final time. Benson, this is Jolene, the frazzled flight attendant you helped out the day of the Thanksgiving parade. I wanted to probably thank you for going above and beyond to get me to my Hawaii flight, which I made, by the way. You'd said for me to tell you how it went, so I thought I'd let you know it was wonderful and incredibly beautiful. I felt so blessed. I also wanted to let you know I wrote a positive feedback message to the Coast Hotels company to let them know how awesome you are. I'd consider dropping it off this letter in person, but I won't make it down there until a little before Christmas, and so I opted to mail it instead. I hope you don't mind. Thanks again, and Merry Christmas, Jolene. And at the bottom, I put my phone number. Lord, I know this is crazy, I whispered as I sealed the envelope. Five minutes later, I parked and walked to a grocery store. Letter in hand and my boots clicking with each decisive step, I made my way to the blue postal box that I secretly imagined as Doctor Who's police box that would transport me back to the hotel to hand deliver the letter myself. Shaking off the silly notion, I silently said, oh, Lord, I give it to you, as I slid the letter into the mouth of the blue box. Breathing out a sigh, I walked to the grocery store as a good a time as any to get some groceries. Within a minute, I saw a woman who worked in upper management for my airline. I stopped to say hi, hoping she'd remember me. Her welcoming smile was assurance that she did. Without mentioning that I was hoping to be transferred to Portland once there were openings, she brought it up. You know, I just got an email that base transfers are going to be awarded soon in February, which was just a couple months away. Really? I have a transfer for Portland and do you know how many open, openings there'll be? I queried. She pulled out her cell phone to, and to check her email. Looks like there'll be 20 spots. 20 spots was a lot. That really gave me a shot. As I walked back, uh, walked away, I realized the irony as I exited the baking aisle. I just sent a letter to this guy in Portland, even though I'd been living in Seattle, but soon I would be living in Portland too. Was it fate or a shocking coincidence? Only time will tell. As those who know me will know, it was a shocking coincidence and not fate, <laughs> as my husband will attest to. But that was the end of the saga. And no, I never heard anything back from either my positive feedback to the hotels or the letter that I addressed to ben Benson. Honestly, I can't even remember his name. <laughs> I, it's, I've been... Like, I wrote it years ago and wrote his name as Benson. I don't even remember what his actual name was. Um, but yeah, he never wrote back and or called me because I left my cell number. And uh, so who knows um, if by that point, by the time he got it, he then had a girlfriend or who knows the reason. But what I wanted to pull from this, though, was just the fact that we romanticize things as humans so much. Honestly, I don't remember what he looked like, and he probably could have looked like, you know, a potato sack. And I would have been like, ah, because he helped me get to Hawaii. And I was so nervous and adrenaline packed to make that flight to Hawaii. And there was all these emotions going through me because I really, really wanted to get to Hawaii for my first time ever that he could have been, he might not have been very attractive for all I know. I don't remember. And uh, I would have been like, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I romanticized it and I wrote this down shortly after the entire saga. But um, yeah, that is how my mystery ballet got me to Hawaii for the first time and how I then tried to find him and was unsuccessful. Well, I hope you enjoyed this installment uh, from my past life as a flight attendant, and I hope you'll join me for some more stories next time. Bye.